The following program is brought to you in part by Advanced Hearing Aid Clinic specializes in the most advanced testing and hearing aid technology, sales, service, and in-house repairs of all makes and models. One location to serve you better, 1663 Carling Avenue in Ottawa. The Watertown Hearing Aid Center, serving the community's hearing and visual needs for over 25 years, providing the latest technology in both hearing and vision. Watertown Hearing Aid is both locally owned and operated and is located in the Sherman Mullen Building, Suite 101. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 50 years on television. Now sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. Hello, I'm Mary Lou Metzger. Welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. The program you're about to see, Musical Masterpieces, was taped in 1975. On this show, we'll see the wonderful Lawrence Welk Orchestra performing George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, Tom Netherton singing Stranger in Paradise, and Johnny Zell playing It's All in the Game. At the end of our show, I have a very special visit with trumpeter Johnny Zell, who shares with us some fascinating stories about the Lawrence Welk Orchestra and about his lifelong love of music. So stay with us. And now here's the maestro himself, Lawrence Welk. From Hollywood, the Lawrence Welk Network presents The Lawrence Welk Show. In the program of musical masterpieces, and George Gates conducting the overture, Rhapsody in Blue.
kindly charge, boys and girls, a fine performance. Good evening, friends, and welcome. Here's a musical masterpiece originally titled Danube Waves. I know you'll all enjoy it in its popular form by Guy and Rana. Will you please introduce your number? Thank you, Mr. Welk. This evening we'd like to dance to a masterpiece by the Cuban composer Luquona, Andalusia. Now, if that doesn't ring a bell, you may recognize this familiar tune as The Breeze and I. amazing how they can come up with a new routine every week, and so wonderful. Our handsome and very popular young baritone Tom Netherton is next. Tom sings a beautiful song based on the music of the Russian composer Borodin. <laughs> ¶¶ 
Take my hand, I'm a stranger in paradise, a lost in a wonderland, a stranger in paradise. If I stand starry eyed, that's a danger in paradise for mortals who stand beside an angel like you. I saw your face and I ascended out of the common place into the rare somewhere in space I hang suspended until I know there's a chance that you can Won't you answer a fervent prayer Of a stranger in paradise Don't send me in dark despair From all that I hunger for Just open your angel arms To a stranger in paradise and tell him that he need be a stranger no Much as we'd like to claim Tom as a North Dakota boy, he really comes from Bloomington, Minnesota. And when we played St. Paul recently near Tom's home, they gave him a tremendous welcome. Next, we have a Hungarian composition, and since I have enough trouble with English, I'm going to ask on Martin Florin to do the introduction here. This musical masterpiece was originally written as a violin solo by Monty, the title, Chardas. <laughs>
The late Fritz Kreisler was a musical genius as a violinist and as a composer. Here's our own fine concertmaster, Joe Lavoti, playing a beautiful Chrysler selection, Schoen Rose Marin. And it was good to hear that Chrysler melody once again. Next, a musical masterpiece from south of the border. You'll hear our charming Mexican senorita, Ana Cani. <laughs> Tienes el alma de provinciana, hueles a limpia rosa temperana. A ver, dejara fresca del río, son mi palomos tu caserío. Guadalajara, Guadalajara, hueles a pura tierra mojada. Inolvidables como las tardes en que la lluvia desde las lomas y nos hace hasta zapopar. Say that certainly rates as a musical masterpiece, especially the way it was performed by Anna Kani and our mariachi boys. Here's a pretty and popular song, My Prayer, adapted from a melody by the French composer Boulanger. And let's listen to our wonderful saxophone section with Bob Ralston at the organ. <laughs>
fellows. It's always a pleasure to introduce our lovely champagne lady, Norma Zimmer, especially when she sings a musical masterpiece like Rubenstein's Romance. Norma gives us the popular version. If you are but a dream, I hope I never waken. It's more than I could bear to find that I'm forsaken. If you're a fantasy, then I'm content to be. these next three pretty young ladies, Sandy Gale and Mary Lou. I'm sure you'll enjoy their rendition of this beautiful song from Kismet. Bubbles, bangles, hear how they jing, jing, a ling, a bubbles, bangles, bright shine. so much fun performing baubles, bangles, and beads with Sandy Griffiths and Gail Farrell. I hope you liked it. At the end of our program, be sure to stay with us for a fascinating visit with the talented trumpet player Johnny Zell. And now, back to the show. Here's a musical masterpiece written by a former Vice President of the United States, Charles G. Dawes. The popular title, It's All in the Game, and let's listen to our great trumpet man, Johnny Zell. Thank you. 
What a great tumbled man. It's a little hard to define a musical masterpiece. It doesn't have to be a classic. It can even be a great country song, which has gained wide popularity. Ava Barber, Dick Dale, and the gang have a song which I believe qualifies. <laughs> On top of old Smokey, all covered with snow, I lost my true lover for courting to slow. For courting's a pleasure. For courting's a pleasure. And parting is grief. And parting is grief. And a false-hearted lover. And a false-hearted lover. Is worse than a thief. Is worse than a thief. Come all you young maidens. Come all you young maidens. And listen to me. And listen to me. Never place your affection. Never place your affection. On a green willow tree. On a green willow tree. The leaves they will wither. The leaves they will wither. And the roots they will die. The roots they will Forsaken, and you'll all be forsaken and never know why and never know why and never know why with apologies to George Bizet I'd like to try dancing to a swing version of a theme from the Bizet opera Carmen with the help of Bob Ralston and the boys, I'd like to give it my best shot. Arthur. Here's a German song that goes back quite a few years. I remember it as a boy under the title Klevemchen. I'm sure you'll recognize it and enjoy it by my lovely Italian daughter-in-law, Tanya and Candilo. <laughs> Too far, we wander. Love, sweet voices calling yonder. Shine, little glow, glimmer, glimmer. Shine, little glow, glimmer, glimmer. Like the path below above and lead us on to love. Glow, little glow, fly, 
by a fire Glow like an incandescent wire Glow for the female of the species Turn on the AC and the DC This night could use a little brightening Light up your little old bug of lightning When you gotta glow, you gotta glow, glow A little glow and glow And away we glow, Tanya Glow, little glow and glow the key on. You are equipped with daylight neon You've got a cute best pocket Mazda Which you can make both slow or fast I don't know who you took a shine to Or who you're up to make a sign to I got a guy that I love so Glow, little glow and glow Glow, little glow and glow a different version for Glee version. <clears throat> Bob Ballard, our chief arranger, joined me in writing a new song especially for our sensational clarinet man, Henry Cuesta. We already recorded it in our new 25th anniversary album, and we're also releasing it as a single record. I think you may like it, and who knows, it may turn out to be a, a musical masterpiece. We titled this song, Oh Henry. We can always count on quite a reaction from the ladies in our studio audience 
when Jimmy Roberts sings this next song. Jimmy, take it away. I want no other one. May I interfere just a little? Jimmy, I'm sorry. You come over here, young lady. Jamie, I talked to this lady right before the show. She's from your home state, and she said it would mean everything in her life oh, if you would sing a little love song to her. <laughs> Come over here, sing. What's yep. your name? Edna. Edna? Mm -hmm. Sure, nice to meet you. And tell them where you're from. Kentucky. Well, good. Kentucky, see? Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice sing Can I sing one? a little love Put song to you? <laughs> Till then, life would be so lonely, and only your love can make my dreams come true. I long to feel your lips close to mine. I long to know that moment divine. Where by stars above that my love will not die. No other love have Well, you can see that Jimmy Roberts is still one of the big favorites of the ladies. <laughs> you might not think of this next song as being a musical masterpiece, but it was adopted, adapted from a composition, Espana Rhapsody, so I guess it qualifies. Lawrence's newest discoveries, the lovely Szymanski sisters, have a little fun with hot diggity. <laughs> so very glad we found you at Walt Disney World. You certainly fit our musical family. The great composer Tchaikovsky wrote many musical masterpieces. One of his most impressive is his famous 1812 Overture. George Cates conducts the orchestra and chorus in this Bob Ballard arrangement.
I hope you enjoyed our program titled Musical Masterpieces. We had some masterful musicians on the Lawrence Welk Show, and none more so than our special guest, the young man with the horn that joined the Lawrence Welk Show back in 1968. Johnny Zell, welcome. So good to have you here. Thank you, Mary Lou. It's great to be with you, too. When did you first meet Lawrence Welk? I guess it was around 1961, 62. I left my house and I was on a bus, clear town, the longest road in Los Angeles, the straight road, Western Avenue, and it dropped me right off at the Palladium uh, ballroom where they were playing and rehearsing. And I walked in with my trumpet and I pulled on his <laughs> coat strings and said, Mr. Welk, I want to play a trumpet solo for you. <laughs> and he said, well, young man, we don't have time for that right now. <laughs> So how old were you when you met him? Oh, about 13. Kid? Oh, my gosh. Yes. You knew then you wanted to be a part of the Lawrence Welk Isn't that something? Exactly right. How did you start playing trumpet? Well, I, I started on violin, and gosh, I didn't enjoy that at all. It just wasn't my instrument. And all my friends were going down that long road every day, you know, to get their saxophone lessons and guitar lessons, and, and uh, I found a trumpet one day. And so I got that trumpet. It was an old beat-up one, an old silver model with dents in it and everything like that. And I got it and started practice on it, and that was my instrument. I really liked it. You have a special connection to the Lawrence Welk Show with an instrument that you got, too, though, don't yes, you? Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. That was really something. It just shows you how things are. There was a trumpet player on the show, Norman Bailey, a very nice uh, trumpet player, and he played very, very well. And he had an extra gold trumpet, and he let me have it. And you can imagine a young boy with a nice shiny trumpet, you know, and, and it just gave me such encouragement. And I got that shiny trumpet and it started to really practice and then it really started taking off. Do you remember your first job? Yes, I do. I was in high school and I got a job for six nights a week at a bowling alley <laughs> playing, playing the trumpet in the lounge. Oh boy, I want to tell you, it was really something because we had to work six nights a week until two in the morning, and then high school started at seven in the morning. So after the first week, I was really tired. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Got me ready for the music business. You joined the union pretty young too, didn't you? Yes, yes. Uh, in those days, and, and still today, you had to join the union to get the better jobs, and of course the benefits were good and everything. So I joined the union, and there were some wonderful people there that really furthered my career and, and uh, introduced me to people that I could work with. So you did a lot of touring over the years. Yes. The first name I have on here is Freddie Martin. Yes, the wonderful Freddie Martin Orchestra. And he had the singing saxophone, and it was a real good sound. And I loved to play on that orchestra because it had a lot of trumpet solos. And they would play the classical songs, you know, bum, bum, ba da, 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 da. It was a trumpet solo. <laughs> And I really liked playing that. I got to play it every night with the band, and we went on the road and everything like that. And then when we came back to town, it was a steady job at the Coconut Grove in Los Angeles. And we went in for four weeks, and we stayed four months. So it turned out to be, to be a real good That's job. That's a great run for the music business. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> you were also with the Russ Morgan Orchestra. Yes. Freddie was going back out on the road, and Russ Morgan needed a trumpet player, and he was going to stay in town. By then, I was figuring that if I stayed with a band like that, I'd be able to stay in town and not have to be on the road so much. So in those early years, it worked. 
Well, I joined Russ, and of course he had been with Freddie Martin in the early days in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So they were kind of rivals, but Russ was staying in town and working, and I love his orchestra too, because he wrote some great songs. You know, Somebody Else Has Taken My Place, and Does Your Heart Beat For Me, and yeah, my favorite, You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You, you know. Wonderful songs. Yes. And so we got to play all those songs, and I learned them and all the style of the band and everything, and, and made a living. So you went into the Army? Yes. They wrote me a letter, and all the men that are watching here tonight, you know what in, was in that letter. You open it up, and it says, greetings. <laughs> and when it says greetings, you know you're going into the Army. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, for how long? Well, I could have gone for two years, but if I wanted to get with a real good band, I had to sign up for three years. And I did want to get with the NORAD band, which was in Colorado Springs, because a lot of my friends from Los Angeles, good players, uh, Warren Looney and Dave Edwards and Richard Maloof, uh, <laughs> okay. they were all in the band, and I wanted to get with that band. So I signed up for three years. Went into the band and just had a tremendous career in the service. It was just great. Was that the group, the Commanders? The Commanders, that's right. That was the show group. And we, what a band. Oh, gosh. We I even mean, did we, some recordings. We, yes, we sure did. You live together with the guys and you play together all the time, the music. You really get tight. So how did you happen to come to the Lawrence Welk Show? Well, one day when I was on CQ, that means you're in charge of quarters and you're the only one there because it's maybe an off day or something like that. I was in there, I was practicing the trumpet, and I had my coat off and I had my hat off. And this car drove up to the band room, and it had two stars on it. And so I looked at it and I thought, that's a general's car. So I quickly got my coat on, my hat, to look business-like, you know. I was the only one there, but I had to. He walked in, he says, I'm looking for Private Zell. And I said, yes, sir, I'm here. And he said, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, uh, helping us with Army recruiting. I said, well, great. That would be wonderful, sir. The first thing he said was, now, next week, he said, we want to fly you to Hollywood. You're going to be on the Lawrence Welk show. Well, I was just excited because from that very first time that I had pulled on his coat for an audition, now it was a few years later, and I was going down to play on the show. So I took my trumpet on the airplane and went in. And this time when I walked into the rehearsal, he stopped the rehearsal and he said, oh, boys, he says, this is Johnny Zell. I know him from many years ago. He's come to play a solo for us. And he put me with Johnny Klein and the Lennon sisters and Myron Florin and Buddy Merrill. We had a little group there. And I played, played a trumpet solo on the show. And it was a lot of fun. And at the end of that show, he called me over, like he did so many times to people who were guests. He'd go like this. And he said, Johnny, how much time do you have left in the service? And I said, nine months, sir. He says, well, I'll tell you what. He says, when you get out, he says, you come and see me. I might have a job for you. That's just exactly the way he put it. I might have a job for you. Well, you know what? He was sincere about that, and he kept that job open for me all that time. So when I got out of the service, I went immediately back to Hollywood and was a member of the show. And it was, uh, nobody would ever know this. Uh, when I got there, the musicians' union was on strike. Well, I was a member of the musicians' union, but I'd come back, and from the army, I didn't have too much money on me, maybe $50, you know. And, uh, but I was a member of the orchestra, and, but we weren't doing any shows because there was a strike. So he called me on the telephone one night, and he said, Johnny, he says, I know the musicians are on strike. He says, but I know you just got out of the Army. He said, and I want you to know your check is going to be there every week. And I want to tell you, to a young man coming out of the Army, <laughs> I had money for my rent then. Yeah. Lawrence always cared so much about his people. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I'm not the only one. He did some mighty, and he never wanted anybody to find out those things. He just kept them quiet. What are some of your best memories from the show? Probably... Uh, his dancing, he loved to dance, and the, his accordion playing, he loved to play the accordion, I mean, and he loved the people. He would get out there and he would make up a conversation that when there wasn't anything to talk about, he'd make up a conversation, <laughs> it would be wonderful. You also had the honor of playing for his memorial service. Yes, yes. When he passed on, uh, it was a sad moment for us all. 
uh, but they asked several of us to do some music for it. When they were talking to me about playing Amazing Grace for the trumpet solo, I thought rather than stand up in front of the audience, I would go way in the back of where we were, the, the building that we were having the funeral in. And it was all made of marble. So I went way in the back, and when I got the cue to play the song, I played it from way back there. So the sound of the trumpet just went out throughout the whole, was it the mausoleum or whatever you call it, where the funeral was, and it just bounced off the walls. And people enjoyed that. Well, Lawrence couldn't have gotten a better send-off. Oh, thank you. Thank and we're you so kindly. lucky to have you here thank today. Thank you kindly. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you all for watching us and for keeping the Lawrence Welk Show on public television. So until next time, as Lawrence always said, keep a song in your heart. The preceding program was brought to